I guess I've traveled a different road With every step I know I should worry for my soul And I, I guess I've had my share of lovers But how I have discovered You can't live beneath the covers Well by Mike McWilliams upstairs to the right music uh, doing a little writing today um, picking out some tunes that I'm thinking about recording and I was thinking about discussing with you about the vintage guitar market and about uh, you know uh, is it a wise thing to invest in vintage guitars or not uh, this is my Yamaha uh, that's I think this is a 94 so almost there. They say that a vintage guitar is something that's 30 years old, so it's getting pretty close. Um, but, you know, I bought this guitar just because, quite frankly, you know, it's got a beautiful tone to it. You know, I just, I just love this guitar. So it had nothing to do with investing in uh, it as a, uh, a kind of down the line payday, um, which I think is one of the things that is a big danger uh, when you're thinking about investing in guitars, you know, when you invest in something, uh, you should only invest in the things that you know really, really well. So if you're interested in investing in vintage guitars, which is, you know, let me ask you this question. How many billionaires made their billions of dollars from investing in vintage guitars? And the answer is zero. <laughs> because it's just not that kind of party you know you can make money investing in stocks uh, real estate you know that kind of thing uh, but really uh, when it comes to uh, vintage instruments you're really getting into a territory that I think is uh, full of pitfalls um, why I'll give you an example uh, and I'm kind of just I'm going off the top of my head today so we're just talking you know, you look at a uh, 1957 Les Paul uh, standard. Uh, it has, uh, you know, the vintage hundred. It has well, vintage now. It has humbuckers in it, the same as the 58 and 59s. Uh, it has all the accoutrements of. There's very little between a late production 57 and an early production 58 in terms of build quality. But the price difference between the two of those can get into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And why is that? Well, of course, as we all know, it's because the 58s, 59s, and the 60s were used by, you know, our guitar heroes, you know, our name, household name guys like Paige and, and uh, uh, Clapton and uh, guys like them, Peter Green. Uh, so, you know, really, uh, it's not based upon the actual value of the guitar, uh, although with the 57s, the 58s, 59s, and 60s, uh, Gibson didn't produce a lot of those, so there's not like the mass-produced guitars that we find today. Like this one is a mass-produced guitar. I'm sure there's, you know, two or three, four thousands of these floating around out there, so their value is not going to be very high. Uh, even when it does turn vintage in another five years or so. So, uh, what is it that makes those guitars, uh, you know, vintage? What, what is it that makes that big price difference between the 58 and the 57? And that's because, as I was saying, our guitar heroes played the 58, the 59, and the 60s. And uh, those are the guitars that the baby boomer, the baby boomer, it's always a tough one for me to say, the baby boomer generation uh, has a lust for. Uh, you know, you, you've done the standard things in life, I suppose. You had the wife and kids, and you got the kids off to college, you paid all your bills, and you got some extra money laying around, and you're thinking to yourself, hey, I always wanted to have Jimmy Page's, you know, guitar. So, you know, you go out there in the market, uh, depending upon your ability, and you buy the closest thing to that as possible. 
Um, and uh, I think it's one of the reasons why Gibson comes out with so many uh, collector editions of guitars because they're basically advertising to those baby boomers saying, hey, someday, you know, this guitar is going to be a collector guitar. When actually, very rarely do any of those guitars that are in the collector's, uh, we'll put it, uh, uh, title uh, that Gibson puts out. Very rarely do any of them actually become uh, collector guitars or collectible, or will they ever become collectible? Uh, no, it is the providence of a guitar that uh, has a lot to do with it. It is um, the desire in the market for it, and uh, some of the uh, things that also tie in is who owned it. So this whole vintage, uh, you know, trend can really be traced back, or the, 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 the frenzy can really be traced back to 1999 uh, when Eric Clapton uh, put up most of his uh, guitars, a lot of his guitars up for sale to uh, earn money for his Crossroads charity. And uh, he put up his 1956 Stratocaster that ended up fetching a million dollars. At that point, you know, the big money said, hey, wait a minute, there's obviously some real money in these vintage guitars. Uh, so that's when the frenzy started. It lasted from about 1999, 2000 until 2008 when the bottom fell out of the vintage market. Um, a lot of the cats that invested in guitars during that time, that uh, 99 to 2008 period, are still seeking to recoup the money that they invested in those vintage instruments, uh, despite what Joe Bonamassa might tell you. <laughs> and uh, although in his case he does have the, the, the pick of the crop, so I'm sure his uh, collection does a lot better than most, but for the most part the bottom did fall out of that uh, vintage market. And uh, so I use uh, this uh, story as a classic, you know, tale of uh, warning or uh, a cautionary tale, so to speak, about uh, thinking that, you know, every old guitar is going to end up some year down the line as a massive uh, financial windfall for you. And that's absolutely not true at all. A very, very few percentage of guitars uh, actually really hold uh, that value uh, that they were getting back there in that uh, 1999 to 2008 period that I just discussed. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, for me, I have three Les Pauls now. One of them, my 1996 uh, Les Paul Gold Top, or actually in this case it's a bronze top, uh, I bought it for $1,500. I can get $1,500 that I put into it all day long. So I'm not saying that vintage guitars are a losing prospect. All of them, there are some. Uh, the reason why those uh, Les Paul classics from the 90s hold their value is because it was the good wood era. Now see, there, there we go. We've got an example of uh, uh, just like an ephemeral kind of uh, a thing that brings uh, this particular model of guitar some value to it. So I guess what I'm saying, like any other collectible, and fine art is a really good example of that as well, um, the playbook that determines whether a vintage guitar has any value is highly subjective. Uh, it's a moving target. Uh, and, uh, you know, I really don't see that error that we had between 99 and 2008 ever really coming back again. Uh, because that was at a period where, as I'm saying, a lot of baby boomers, uh, their kids had gone off and uh, were out of the house. And those were a lot of cats, doctors and lawyers and things of that nature that had the excess cash to really put into that vintage market and it really drove those prices up. Uh, Norm at Norm's Rare Guitar, uh, you know, he benefited greatly from that, although he's been in the game since the early 70s, uh, and he can tell you, you know, if you see his videos, he'll tell you how he saw a 59 going from $2,500. Of course, uh, you have to adjust for inflation, so uh, I, I don't know, I'll look it up what $2,500 in 1972 was compared to $2,500 with the inflation of that would be. 
uh, what the value is at this time, but in any case, I know it's not two hundred thousand dollars, or three hundred thousand, or four hundred thousand, or half a million that some of these fifty uh, nines are going for. But when he first started in the game, he'll tell you they were twenty five hundred bucks. And uh, then that period from ninety nine is two thousand to two thousand and eight, we saw really uh, the golden age, I think, of investing in uh, guitar vintage guitars. Uh, again, in my opinion, I don't think that that time is ever coming back again. You know, you know, if you're really going to get into vintage guitar, you shouldn't go more than five grand. Uh, I think that if you get a good deal at five grand on a vintage guitar or one that you think is going to appreciate in value, you're pretty much well safe because you haven't put, you know, relatively a lot of money into that investment, and at the very least, you got yourself a pretty sweet instrument. Uh, you know, so they really can't, like that old song, can't take that away from me. Uh, <laughs> you know, you do have that going for you. Uh, so, um, I guess at the end of this long rant is do I think that investing in vintage guitars is a good idea? And in my personal opinion, no, it's not. Uh, because uh, I, like I said, I just, the baby boomers with that kind of discretional uh, income, that, 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 you know, they're literally and figuratively dying off. Uh, so the up and coming uh, market of uh, cats my age, I guess, you know, uh, we still kind of hold on to wanting to have that 59 burst. But if you go to a, a cat who's half my age, he's going to be like, well, what's wrong with, you know, anything that I can go out and get now? You know, I think that the, you know, they're not going to have, I mean, I'm sure Buckethead's guitars, you know, if you get, you know, cats like Buckethead or, or some of these uh, custom shop stuff that uh, Gibson is doing with these uh, modern artists, modern guitar players, those will go up in value. You slash uh, Appetite for Destruction guitars. Uh, certainly, uh, they have held their value and gone up a bit because they're tied in with a particular artist. So, that, again, that playbook comes into play. Uh, that subjectiveness, what makes the difference between, you know, this model and this model in terms of why there's such a huge discrepancy in the price for them on Reverb or eBay. So, uh, no, I, I just don't see cats, uh, I really don't see people having the kind of interest in investing in, in, in uh, guitars like that anymore. Uh, I, I just don't. Uh, uh, you know, I think that day and age is pretty much well over. Now, um, in the coming recession slash depression that we're headed into, certainly we're going to see guitar values fall. So, uh, if you're liquid, if you have money, probably in about a year or so, you're probably going to pick up on some pretty nice deals on stuff that right now are significantly overpriced, in my honest opinion. Uh, uh, those will go down in value because uh, people will need to liquidate them. Uh, so, uh, in the short term, we are going to see a fall, in my opinion, uh, the vintage guitar market in terms of the prices that they hold. Now, still at all, uh, you know, when you get into those 59 and 60 bursts, 58, 59, 60 bursts, those will relatively hold their value, but I just think the pool of people who are interested in buying those is going to shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. And um, real money people are going to, who got burned and that uh, that lead up to 2008 and they're still looking to recoup the money that they put into the vintage instruments that they did buy they're not going to go into that market again you know and uh, so anyway if you are interested in vintage guitars like i said your sweet spot is 5,000 and below anything above that you're asking for trouble unless it's something that you absolutely have to have you got to have that slash original appetite for destruction Gibson that's going for like you know crazy money you know I think that at the time they came out they were five six grand and now they're twice of that you know if you got to have that uh, do it but uh, realize that the pool of people who are going if you're planning on on buying it and using it and keeping it and loving it then that's all gravy if you're planning on buying it and you're hoping to roll it down to somebody else down the line be careful 
uh, because I really don't think the pool of people who are going to be interested in or then have the capital to invest in that kind of thing is getting smaller and smaller and smaller with every year that goes by. Oh, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's really, again, you know, you should get into it because you love something, uh, not because you're looking to make some money off, but that's, that's another story for another day. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Uh, I just want to take the time to mention to you, hit that like button. It really makes a lot of difference to helping out this channel. I want to thank everybody who subscribed to me. Uh, I want to wish you all, uh, you know, peaceful days ahead. I know it's not looking that way, but uh, uh, just keep cool, uh, keep safe, and take care of yourselves. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Like the show? Like the show. We'll show your support by subscribing and hitting the like button.